it, Stacey with So Steady, and I'm super excited that we are here today with Sarah Diddy, Sarah Thomas with Sarah Diddy Rulers, and we have got some really exciting new things to share with everyone. Um, Sarah's coming in right now. There she is. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> so, as long as I don't sound like a robot. <laughs> You sound amazing. Uh, <laughs> I'm the only robot out there today. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. It's, maybe it's just Sarah's sound. I don't know, but we'll find out. Um, so we are going to have Sarah show us um, a new pattern that she has created. Um, and we're going to talk about a promotion we've got going with her rulers. Um, that's going to incorporate some amazing education um, and a whole bunch of ruler designs. So Sarah has been busy, busy, busy. So Sarah, I will go ahead and let you take over showing off this beautiful quilt Woo! project together. So hi, y'all. Um, and I apologize, first of all, it's like 95 degrees and I look very dewy and you has got to go with it. So this is part of Promise Pattern. The whole oh, I love that actually nine of these so it's like a really nice fun 60 by 60 quilt but here you go it's a super 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 easy foundation paper piecing pattern that truly you could just do it with strips but for anyone who wants to get into foundation paper piecing it's a really good entry point so you don't have to worry about weird themes it's just nice little strips that you kind of line up and there's little tips and tricks within the pattern to help you do that You'll have to excuse the dogs barking. They're they're special. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some fun ways to use the rulers that I have before you actually quilt so you can plan what you're quilting. And this works on this pattern. It works on any pattern. Um, so I've got my block. And I actually got a piece of white um, poster board. Oh, I love it. Have you seen preview paper before? yes okay so i taped a piece of preview paper onto my board and you can see along the edges there's black lines on the outer edges of the preview paper so it's kind of a already marked perimeter area Excellent. i have tape up here and the preview paper is a lot longer than the actual quilt block itself so no chances of me drawing on the quilt because hmm, that's happened before. Well, this is such a cool way to show everybody how they can do some preview quilt designs yes. on their projects. I love this. So I'm going to rotate the camera downward. So you're looking at this and not, not my sweaty face. All right. Let me rotate right. down. There it is. Gorgeous. Wait, what is that? Looks amazing. All right. So I got the preview paper down, you can see the black lines here. I just know when I'm practicing, I am nowhere gonna go anywhere close to this black line. So sure, I get it, my block extends past this, but for all intents and purposes, we're just gonna focus within the preview paper for this. Cool? Excellent, I love it. So I was gonna ask Sarah, what do you think about us doing a quick showing of all of the amazing ruler designs that we have for you here at so steady i think do you want me to show them no i've got it actually i've got it on the screen right now so um i was thinking that i could just take them on over to that screen if that works okay for you on the screen i'll the back door there we go so um we have basically um, a really, really good variety of designs that uh, Sarah has put together. She has um, her two-piece linear channel set of rulers, which is um, this amazing two-piece set that comes with a straight ruler and then a linear channel ruler as well. She's got her Lotus design that comes with three different sizes of pebbles, as well as this gorgeous uh, Lotus shape. Um, she has her three piece paradigm ruler set. We have a Sarah Diddy five piece wave ruler set, arc ruler set, which is a four piece arc ruler set, and then a boomerang ruler set and a Valentine ruler set. 
So Sarah has created, and I'm just going to go in and show you one of them. She has created ruler designs that go on this quilt pattern that she's giving everyone for free with the purchase of any of her rulers. She's created this, this uh, a quilt design pattern for each and every one of them that goes on top of the promise pattern. So with that, with, um, you'll get a you'll get um, free access to the promise pattern, the paper piecing pattern, which is this gorgeous uh, rainbow. You know what it reminds me of, Sarah? I'm just gonna throw it out there. It reminds me of Care Bears. It or I kept thinking Rainbow Bright. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, I that ages me a little bit, but that's exactly what it reminds me of. Um, but you can see just with that one Lotus um, template, temp uh, Lotus and Pebbles template, what you can create in just one, a quilt design. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous work. Sarah is an amazing designer. So I wanted everyone to just get a feel for what you're, they're going to be getting. And I will tell you that not only when you purchase one ruler template or one set from Sarah and you get this promise pattern, but you're actually going to get all of the quilt designs um, in that free, in that class that she's gonna be offering. So you're gonna get the pattern and all of the ruler designs that come with that pattern, which I think is like 12 total. So tons and tons of opportunity there. So Sarah, um, I just wanted to kind of give them a little taste of what that's all about. And now I'm gonna head back over to you and have you continue on. It looks like you've got your arc rulers out. I've got, I have a whole stack of rulers that I just was grabbing. I'm actually going to start with the linear channel ruler because if you're new to work, I always say go find It's not going to make you feel like you're in over your head. Anyone can do a story. Someone was just asking Sarah, where did you get that preview paper from? Oh my goodness. Um, Many local quilt shops carry it, online quilt shops carry it. I, I, I just, any show, do I find a booth that is carrying it and I buy a roll? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, I, okay. wish, you know, I know nothing about it other than when I'm at a show, I see him sticking in different people's booths and I'm like, okay, I'll take a roll, please. Yeah, yeah. Funny <laughs> I'm here. Um, I will say on the preview paper packaging, it says use a Sharpie marker. Okay. I use a dry erase marker because I'm frugal and I like to make things last. Sure. So, there you go. Um, also, for what it's worth, dry erase marker is easier to get out of fabric than Sharpie is. Uh, good call. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely go with the, the dry erase if you can. <laughs> All right. So it looks like you're ready to start kind of creating a design here. Yeah. Let me show you. In the linear channel ruler package, Ev well, every single package of rulers comes with two. Let me pull these guys out of here. So you get this package with two little round niblet things. One has a bigger hole and one has a smaller hole. So what these do, these act as your ruler foot because you have to have a ruler foot. Let me grab one real fast so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I'd say I'd grab one real fast, but I think they're downstairs at the long arm. So ignore me. All right. Ruler foot. It has a quarter inch circumference around where the needle is and it's a safety area, but then you just always have to keep in mind that where you're quilting, it's always going to be a quarter inch away from that ruler edge. So when I practice with my rulers, I use one of these guys and I use the one with the bigger hole with a dry erase marker. And then the smaller hole, if I'm just practicing designs on paper, um, this way it's my pen or my pencil is my needle and thread. And then the little tracing nib is my ruler foot. So I'm going to set those down. I keep all of mine in my fun little pouch. You know, someone asked a question. They said, would, would the markers that they use for the acrylic rulers work on this? And the, yes, those are, those are wet array. No, those are also dry, um, dry erase markers, so they'll absolutely work if you're using them on your rulers. And you were just a robot again, so I'll just kind of agree with whatever I think you said. <laughs> so yeah, I'm using dry erase marker as my needle and thread, and then my tracing nib with the bigger hole is gonna be my ruler foot. So this way, this is how I'm gonna practice marking things with my rulers. Now, with the design I gave for the channel ruler, 
It's a basic cross hatch on the diagonal. And this is a 20 inch block. So if you wanna make sure that you're getting your diagonal correct, I, first of all, even if this were a quilt, I'd get out my fabric marking pen and a big long yardstick or a big long ruler. And I would measure from corner to corner. And I would just grab my fabric marking pen and draw a line on that diagonal. So that way I knew that was my exact 45 degree angle. And then from there, that's where I would start practicing with the linear channel ruler. And it really depends which one you wanna use on this. The inner is a really two inch by eight inch and it has different markings on it. Not that you really need those markings for this particular quilt pattern. And then the channel ruler, I love this thing. And for me, well, when I'm doing piano keys, I really love this guy because it's just so easy to go down, come up, pop over, and then slide the ruler down, pop up. So this is my very first line and I've marked this with a fabric marking pen. But if you just wanna practice working on this, so now I've got my tracing nib and you're gonna set that right on that line. And so remember, you are quilting a quarter inch away from the edge of that ruler. So you're just going to stop reposition. And this is really sort of simple talking about straight lines right here. So then oh, and then I was going to mention, I know you can't really hear me, Sarah, but I was, I'll tell everybody else. These nibs that Sarah speaks of come with her rulers. So that's something that's a bonus is that you get these stitching line discs with the rulers. At every yeah. single well, every single ruler set has a small and a large nib included, which is fantastic. All right, so to keep going with my crosshatch, my first guideline quilted with ink. I quilted over my first guideline. And then you go out into your empty space or down the seam, depending on what you're doing. And you just move the ruler over, and there are quarter inch marks on it. So remember, if you're quilting, a quarter inch away from that edge, and if I want to do a one inch cross hatch, I would only need three as my ruler or my what am I trying to say? I keep saying pen, but it's like my thread. My needle and thread would be a quarter inch outside the ruler edge. So there's a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch. So I would line that third line up over the stitch line that I just did and then follow that down and then just keep readjusting and setting that third line on top. Now I will say with dry erase marker it does rub off pretty easily so you just need to be aware of that when you're moving things for it, for it, it will definitely. So this is just a really simple way practice the cross hatch. Let's see here. Let me do this line and then I'll switch directions. And when I do cross hatch like this, I start, can y'all see that very well? The one in the corner, kind of. So I start in the middle and I work my way out to the corner to smooth down the block. And then I come back and I work my way out to this corner just to keep the block smoothing outward and not causing any ripples or bumps anywhere. Same thing when I go to do the opposite direction, I would get out a big, big ruler and a fabric marking pen. I wish I had other color dry erase markers somewhere. I know I do right where they are. And so I would draw my guideline to follow before actually quilting it. And then from there, let's just say I went ahead and did that. Where did my nib go? Here it is. All right, let me finish this one. I, I really love how you're showing um, the drawing and then also speaking to the fact that you would, how you would quilt it, that you would do each side kind of, um, uh, you know, yeah, spreading out that way. Mm -hmm. All right. An example where I would switch over to the channel portion of the rulers. So I'm right-handed. I think most people are right-handed. Therefore, I hold my ruler in my left hand and quilt with my right hand. Um, I'm on a long arm. I typically quilt on a long arm. That's my happy place. I could do them on a domestic, but 
you might want to buy some fun tickets and popcorn for that one because it's special. <laughs> um, so if I were coming this direction, obviously my ruler could move over and I've got those marking lines really easy, correct? So I've got this really easy to see, move it over. My marking lines are on top of my stitch lines and they're easy to see. But if I'm coming this way, I don't really have a guideline off of that. So if I grab this ruler right here and I come up on the inside, all of the rulers that have the ability to quilt on the inside, there's a slot that you can pass your needle through and then lower your foot once it's through there. So if this is my needle, I have the presser foot raised up, pass the needle through this slot, drop the presser foot and then come up to the edge, easy peasy. So this one, and it's got my markings. So I would go over to the second marking because that one is my one inch line. So I would line that up on there, come against the edge, up, readjust, up, readjust. So this way I'm still holding everything naturally without having to twist and contort to get that perfect lineup using my previous line. And then Come on down this way and then we'll come the other direction. Line it up, quilt. Line it up, quilt. Line it up and quilt. And there you go. So that's using the linear channel. Really basic cross hatch, but I have to admit a diagonal cross hatch is probably one of my favorite go-to designs for quilting. It's just simple, it's effective, it doesn't take away from a pattern and it keeps everything kind of nice and tacked down and in place. So there you go. Who has questions on the linear channel ruler? Probably no one, it's pretty simple. <laughs> All right, so then if you have extra batting or fabric, do I have any scrap fabric here? I've got some scrap iron on. And then I'll just wipe off my lines. But I do this when I'm quilting, you know, quilting, quilting, I'll put some preview paper down over my design and I'll practice different designs with markers before I actually take the paper up then and quilt what I want to do just to get a feel for my final design. Um, all righty. How about people are loving it, Sarah. I love the linear channel. So we got a new one. Okay, great. So let's go. Let's do something easy with the wave rulers. How's that? Because waves are fun. All right, this is the gentle and rolling wave. And if you get the whole wave collection, you get five rulers. It ends up giving you six different waves. And it's worth mentioning that all five rulers, when they fit together, they fit together one after another after another, like puzzle pieces. So, it's handy if you're on a long arm and you can't move your fabric around well. If you're quilting this wave right here, this wave holding it this way is gonna be the exact same wave as this ruler right here if you need to switch placements like up and down type thing. So coming this way or coming this way, if that makes sense. But they all fit together and it's kind of fun for little kids if they're into fitting puzzle pieces, they can help you with your quilting. All right, let's use, let's use, which one is this? The rolling wave. I like this guy. So I'm going to start right in the center for this one, because again, it's best when you're quilting, it's best to try and start in the center and work your way out, or at least start somewhere and work your way um, consecutively down that pattern, if that makes sense, just to reduce any sort of bunching or anything like that. So I'm going to line up. There is a registration line on here, and that's what I'm going to go with. I'm just going to go with the registration line right on my halfway seam, and I'm going to follow that. There's a needle stop point, so I'm going to stop, reposition. So my needle stop point is going to go to the same edge, and my registration line is going to go on the middle seam, so I know I'm lined up. Needle stop. Line it up, line it up. Good. Then I'm going to reposition and you can make it up to you. Do you want it to follow and be parallel? Let's let everyone else choose. Do we want it to be a parallel wave 
or do we want it to be like an amoeba type wave? Oh, okay. Let's give them a second. So I have another question to ask you while we give them a second to choose. Okay. I'm listening. I have to let the dogs in. They're dying, but I'm listening. Okay. They, someone wanted to know the, the brand name of the preview paper again. Uh oh, no idea is the answer. <laughs> Looks like we need to go out on the um, yeah. on the internet and see. We've got a few requests for amoeba, so I say we go that way. Go oh, amoeba. Um, yeah, I have. I honestly, it's just called preview paper. So I think if you look up Quilter's preview paper, you're gonna find it somewhere. Um, wait, I have an empty or a new rollover here. Let me see if it has a brand on it. Check me out. Hey, look at me, and I was right. It's called um, Quilter's Preview Paper. <laughs> That's, yeah, I don't know. If you just look qu up Quilter's Preview Paper, you should find it somewhere. All right, we're going with the amoeba. So here's where we have some options. We can go with the same ruler I just used and just shift it over halfway to do that amoeba type curve. Or I can grab the ruler that it fits into and see how it's already a shifted over halfway frequency. FYI, I used to do calculus for fun, so this is like totally up my alley. I'm such a nerd. All right, so here we go. We're going to go here and then we'll just space it out, space it out about like this. And I'm coming back the other direction. I know I went, for me, it was left to right the first time, but now I'm going right to left. Stop at the needle down, realign it, needle down realign it and then what are you using as your spacing right now did you draw some tick marks on that I, paper? I, I just eyeballed it but okay. but again anytime you're not sure what you want to do i'll do it down here let's just say i want to put my registration line at an inch spacing from the top of my frequency i would line up the one inch mark on my frequency here and just kind of draw a line and that's where i could lay down the horizontal, uh, the horizontal registration line. Okay, excellent. So let's do that. This is gonna gonna be a little bit tighter because I brought it in more. But there. Oh, this one's gonna be really tight. This is actually fun because it's gonna touch. I bet there's quite a few quilt shops around that have preview paper too. Oh, that's yeah. I mean, because it's always a quilt shop booth that has it when I buy it at a show. Oh, absolutely. So I would recommend people check with their local yeah. with their local shop too and see if they've got something. So this one's fun. If you do a one inch spacing at the top of your frequency, your wave bumps into each other and it's really it's pretty. Oh, that's kind of neat. It makes me think of the bottom of like the ocean. Yeah. So let's do let's see what we get if we space it out. I'm gonna move that line because that was our registration marking line. So let's mark it two inches from the frequency top and see what that gives us. And so see, this is something you can do. If you know you want to do this type of wiggle, but you don't know what spacing you want to do, try it out with preview paper first. And then make a note when you go to quilt of what the spacing is that you actually end up like. So this is two inches. So there's needle stop marks, registration lines, got it. There we go. What do you think of that? That one looks nice. I like that spacing. Yeah, that looks like great, right? Great spacing. Good. I like that. And then something fun you can do, which is not on the paper, but this goes with anything. Any type of quilting you do, I always say, Use your tools as a guideline 
for doing more free motion work and challenging yourself to free motion work. So one of my favorite designs to do is using my rulers to make these waves, but then coming back in after all my waves are done because I'm essentially basting my quilt or I'm basting my block with these regular structured lines. So I would start here, do my curves or my waves down to here, then come up and do my waves. Let's do one more set of waves and then I'll show you how I would go in and do the free motion addition. So I'm gonna go with the two inch spacing. There's my registration line. Can you hear my dogs panting? They're not a fan of the heat either. All right. So I would do these waves all the way down this way and then all the way up this way. And then I could leave it like that. Or if you want to get fancy, come in and free motion it. And this is a great place to do ribbon candy where you just go inside or you could do your infinities. I'll do that in a second. So you've given yourself a boundary with your rulers to go in then and practice more free motion or you could do these guys. I mean, you could do anything. You could even just go in and do radiator coil. Here we go. But it's really fun to use your rulers as, you know, something what they are, but then also challenge yourself to work within that space if you want to. So there you go. There's wave rulers. Let me. All right. Are we good with the waves? I think we're good with the waves. While you were doing that, um, I was showing everybody a variety of your wave designs that you created for this uh, project, which I thought was kind of cool because um, you did create like five different wave quilt designs that you can do on this. Yeah, there's a lot you can do. One of my favorites. Oh gosh, well, there's so many. And I put, well, there's the one that ends up looking like confetti. I think that's the chain link that I did up and downwards that ended up looking like confetti. So on this one, I'm just going to start in the center and work my way right then left. But you could start in the corner and just work your way all the way across. So again, it's as long as you're consistent about the direction. You just don't want to start one way and then start doing so much stuff that things start bunching. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. All right, here's my registration line. And I'm just going to set that on the center seam. All right, this is the chain link wave. Needle stop. Center line. I do talk to myself a lot when I quilt. Stop. Needle stop. Center line. Okay. Now this one I'm going to shift over half a frequency. So that way my... Oh, here, I'll come down this way. So that way it's I'm dipping into it. And this, I'm eyeballing it at this point. So I'm taking, there's a quarter inch registration line between the edge of my ruler and into this curve. And I'm gonna line up that quarter inch mark on the bottom of my stitched line. And that's gonna be how I line this up going forward on this next one. Needle stop, adjust, line it up, quarter inch markings. Oh, I love that. So Sarah, someone was curious, uh, would you start the actual quilting from the middle between the waves? What's that? Would you start the quilting from the middle between the waves? You could start, you could start your quilting right down the center and move one direction, then move the other. Or 
you could start it all on one end. And as long as you just keep moving this way, I just wouldn't start on this end and then come down here and then keep going this way. Cause you're going to end up bunching that fabric into the middle. Perfect. That makes sense. Yes. All right. Let me do one more pass. So I'm going to line this up to the bottom of my, there we go. Needle stop, just line it up, quarter inch wave markings, got it. Every time I use this ruler, it really makes me think of like a chicken fencing and I want to have little chickens. I don't know why, it just does. Okay. And you can see, I mean, it does rub because I'm touching it with my arms and everything. So if you wanted to use Sharpie marker just to make sure that it's staying down, to practice, go for it. And again, you could always pull out freezer paper or butcher paper and use the tracing nib that has the teeny hole. And then you can use like a pen or pencil and it's easier and it's not gonna smear as much, but you, you're obviously not doing that with fabric underneath it. So there we go. That's the chain link wave, which is a fun one. All righty. Love it. Yes. Okay, let's see here. What others do we have? Oh, how about one of my favorites that always makes people scratch their heads and go, what? The Valentine rulers. So you get four sizes of the hearts in the Valentine set. And yes, there's only half of a heart. So what do you do? All right. Registration lines on our rulers always touch the fabric because then there's no parallax. And by parallax, that means the distortion from whether you're using three, 4.5 or six millimeter thick um, acrylic. And that's the distance between the fabric and the markings to the top. So yes, there will be parallax if we have it flipped upside down, but that's okay for the first one. So I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna actually start on this seam just so you can see what I'm doing for lining it up. But right now my ruler is upside down and I'm going to lay that dashed line on top of my seam. And I'm going to make sure that my start point is right here on the inside of my rainbow arc. Okay. And it's hard to see with the glare. Alrighty. Hopefully y'all can see this decently. I know my hands are in the way. I'll try this left-handed. Let's see if that works. All right, so needle down and you do half of your heart. Stop where the needle stops into this little cup. Then you flip it over and bring it up in here. And then now your registration line will actually line up right on top of the stitch line that you just did. So you can perfectly align that and then line up your center registration line on that seam. And there's your heart right there. Someone has a request. Yes. They would love to see the Lotus being used. Oh, yeah, that one's sort of fun. I love the Lotus. I'll do that one next for sure. All right, so when we're doing this, then to go to the next point, the next heart's gonna start right here. So just pull this ruler out. Your needle is down right here. And just use this little bit of a straight edge to stitch in the ditch over to your next seam line. And then start it over again. So we're going to line it up. Line it up. Stitch half the heart. Stop with the needle. Down. Put it back. Line it up, put the registration lines right on top of where you stitched. Take it out, stitch out to the corner. And those are the, the heart. So you can see how you can do instead of just one time. All right, we will do it this way. All righty. So I'm going to do parts running down the center of the rainbow arc. I'll do a few and then I'll come back up. So right now I've got my template upside down. 
and my lines are lined up with my center cross line. Line it up, line it up. I'm gonna do woo, half of a heart stop and then just keep going down. Line it up, only do that one side of the heart. We'll do, let's do five of them, how's that? Line it up. How many, is that far? All right, now I'm gonna flip it. Needle is still down. Line up my registration lines on top of the line that I just stitched. smeared it a little bit, but that gives you the idea of a full chain of the hearts. And you can mix up the sizes too. You don't have to do just the single size. If you had wanted, let me grab one of these. If you had wanted to go little heart and then a bigger heart. Flip it. Also, it's worth mentioning every single ruler package on the back of the package, it has a handful of different ideas of designs that you can create with each ruler that's inside that package. So if you just have no clue what to do, oh, in fact, I'm grabbing the Lotus and Pebbles. So here's the Lotus and Pebbles ruler. I'll do this one next. But if you're just like, oh my gosh, what do I do besides the obvious? Flip it over and just look at the back of the package. And then there's all sorts of things that you can figure out with that shape in there. All righty. So Lotus and Pebbles now. Let's do that. Let's do it. So the Lotus and Pebbles and um, people are loving the heart designs. I love the heart. Oh, it's worth mentioning these little hearts um, here. Just trust me and pretend that I'm using my tracing nib. I'm not at the moment, but sh 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 don't shoot me. Okay. So these work really cute. If you want to do sort of like a puppy love type thing, so you can use the hearts for like your paw print pad, and then you can either free motion it or use the Lotus and pebbles, your, um, little half inch pebble, and you could come through do puppy paws. Oh, I love it. Oh, I smeared it. Ugh. But anyways, we get the gist. We get the gist. They are really cute for that. So someone commented that the Lotus ruler is a really big ruler. It's really not that big. Now, bear in mind, I have pretty little hands. And yeah, put it, put it on the ruler really quick. Put it up against that ruler that you had out. The straight ruler. The big straight ruler? The big straight ruler. I think that'll help us see the true size. It's eight inches. So it's eight inches tall by about five? Yeah, five yeah. inches. So the overall ruler, yeah, so that's not too big. We definitely work with rulers that size. I wanted to make sure every single ruler I designed, I took into account long armors and domestic quilters. And for me, working on a domestic machine, in fact, let me grab. Oh, I just dropped it. Oh. All right. So I use my foam paddles when I use rulers at my machine just to help give them some extra stay. But everything I do, I always make sure I feel comfortable under my domestic machine placing it there. And then on the long arm, I mean, sure, you're one-handed holding it, so that really goes into my attention. It's really only one hand holding the ruler, and you're driving the machine with the other hand. And as long as I can get three points of pressure, and it helps having these extra cutouts, because then you kind of have a place to stick a finger for extra um, support and stability. But I made sure my rulers were too big or too obnoxious to feel like they're quilting you versus you're using them. Um, I 
have a couple rulers that were made by somebody else and they're so ginormous, I just feel like I'm out of control when I use them. So I, I really don't use them. They're too big. Okie doke. So Lotus Pebbles. Love this guy. It is fun. This is another one that has the little slot. So your needle is down, lift the presser foot up and slide this underneath the presser foot and the needle and then drop your presser foot back down, then come up to the ruler edge. And so I would come in and I would start with my needle at the origin of my quilt block, line it up, and there's a reference line right here and I'm just gonna lay it down on that seam. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my full lotus pebble, stop. Needle is in the down position. All right. Now here's where you do you, I'll do me, but here's what I'm gonna suggest. The point that I wanna do here is I wanna go all the way around and do this sort of lotus blom blossom all the way around. I personally am gonna switch it to 180 degrees and do that one and work north, south, east, west, and then come in on the angles because I'm afraid if I just quilted it in a circle, it would start pulling and twisting my fabric. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Line it up. Yeah. Needle down. I'm going to come to the sides. It is so humid in here that the ink is just smearing across the surface. All right, so there we've got four, four points done. I'll let you all tell me. Do you want me to do another four and have them come out? On the oh, floor? I, I kind of like that. I think that's gorgeous. I think it's pretty. Yeah. You can always, again, then add in your free motion work where you've got your ruler foot on and that's a quarter inch of space. You could always come back out then and just eyeball that and just free motion echo around this using that ruler foot as a guideline for spacing. Which is kind of fun because then it frames it in and it actually makes it puff up like a motif. So then let's talk about the pebbles that are in here. So the pebbles each have one of those slots for doing your presser foot up with your needle down to be able to pass through, which is handy if you're just going to keep mixing up all the different pebble sizes. You can, you don't have to, but when you do a pebble, come all the way around and then go to where you want to do the next pebble, stop and readjust. But if you want to switch your uh, pebble size, right here, you're going to stop. Wow, that is so smeary. Sorry. You're going to stop with the needle down, put the presser foot up, then switch sizes, bite it under your needle, put your presser foot back down, and then keep going. All right, press our foot up. Let's go to the medium size. Oh, Miri. But you do get the gist for sure. These are really handy too. If you love the look of pebbles and you're just too afraid to motion them, this gives you a starting point and it really does sort of help train your body to do like that hand up coordination of doing a circle and then it'll take you into the ability of like okay well I want to have some perfect ones around this cloud but then maybe I want to come in and just free motion the rest and then you know the outside perimeter is perfect little ruler based circles and everything else is just free motion different sizes and it gives you a chance to practice 
your own free motion work, but then still have the structure and the perfection of the ruler work surrounding it. Um, someone was just asking um, what the sizes of those pebbles were. Do you know the sizes? Yep, there's half inch. Let's see here. The baby is a half inch diameter, three quarter inch diameter, and one diameter. And it actually says it on the little outside of the acrylic. You can see what size it is, and it says it on the packaging too. Yeah. Now, if you already have circles, then and they're of equal size, or you have maybe echo guides or something like that, so you can size them down and size them up, then uh, very similar, you know, it's a circle's a circle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you wanna have that whole, that everything comes in that template. So, you know, it's it's the lotus with the pebbles. So it's kind of handy to have it all in one. It is handy. Um, where did my inside piece go? Cause there it is. All right, so I'm gonna show you the inside piece, FYI. This is kind of pointy, so it is sort of a nice handy weapon if you need it. <laughs> or that type of thing. Just be careful with it. But um, it's not you would jab your eye out or anything like that. This one, you're quilting on the outside of the lotus. So two things to know. It be a little bit bigger, the petal that you get with the inside ruler. And when you come around the corner, you just have to be slow and mindful because that's a very big direction change. But you're actually going to get a rounded tip. And it's kind of pretty then if you want to surround it with um, some of the pebbles. It's just nice and fluid. And I think it looks pretty. All right. So go nice and easy. and Wrap it around. So preview paper really should be stated as um, more like a clear plastic. <laughs> I mean, there's other types of preview paper, but what you're using today is like a clear plastic. Basically overhead transparency type. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could also buy like a clear vinyl. There's I've, lots of different ways you can yeah, do preview paper. I've used um, like bath, like that stuff that you get at Walmart that's like the clear vinyl bathroom type vinyl. And the only problem I had with it is after a couple times of using it, it's just so thick that I think it absorbs some of the the marker and it, you can't wipe it clean. It's a kind of a cloudy marked up type thing. And I've tried using uh, acetone on it or alcohol to wipe it down. And it just, it's smudgier than this, but you could also just grab freezer. Oh, here, in fact, I've got, so. Oh. If I just wanted to practice a design on paper itself, just to get an idea of something without it smudging or whatever. In fact, this is something I'm going to show you. How's this? All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark myself a perfect 90 degree angle in the center. So I've got some guidelines to go off of. Okay. So here's my 90 degree mark. I'll just do kind of like what we did earlier and a four point off. And using marker, I could use the smaller nib with a pen or if I use the marker, I'm gonna show you how this works to me. Hey Sarah, someone asked a good question. They said, can these rulers be used on both their long arm and their Viking low shank machine? And so I wanted to kind of have you speak to that a little bit. Every single machine has specifics on the shank thickness that you can have for rulers. So there are three thicknesses of rulers. Low shank, which is three millimeters, um, 4.5 millimeters, and long arm thickness, which is a quarter inch or six millimeters. It's the same thing. So... Some machines, like my domestic machine, they say use high shank, but my foot will a quarter inch. So I can use on my, I can use my long arm thickness rulers on both my long arm and my sewing machine. Um, certain machines, you're okay with that crossover, but never, 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 never take a low shank ruler to your long arm. That's Space between the foot when it's moving, it up too much. I promise you, your 
ruler will go between the presser foot and the um, the ruler base with the fabric, you'll end up breaking it, the needle will go through it, you'll ruin your timing. Just don't use a low shank thickness ruler on your long arm. It's not a good ending, I promise. Okay. <laughs> and then someone asked a great question. They said, so the inside Lotus comes with it? Yeah, yeah. Yep. The Lotus, answer is yes. You get the inside Lotus, the outside Lotus, and the three pebbles. All right, so say you're just drawing because this is what you're doing and you're just doodling with ruler. You're not really planning on anything other than, oh, I created a really cool design and I like this and I don't know what to do with it. Save it. Have a folder of your papers like this. I have a notebook just of designs that I'm like, oh, I'll do this on a quilt someday. But if you do it like this, let me show you how your rulers then work to your advantage again. All right, so this is the outside, which is pretty, and you could come in and you could do it again at the 45 degree, and we could add those in there if we wanted to. But I'm gonna bring y'all, oh, how can we do this? All right, we're gonna move for a second. I'm gonna bring you over here to my messy desk. All right, close your eyes if you get dizzy because you're moving with me. We're moving. Ooh, and I'm crashing. All right, can you see my light box down here? I can see your light box. box. All righty, I use my light box for all sorts of stuff, but you love this design you made. You're like, I want to use it as a template. All right, set it down on your light box. Bring your fabric, which is under that. So let me grab some other fabric. Well, that's a nice big what light box you got there. This is the Wafer 2 by Daylight Company. I love this size. All right. So lay your quilt block down on top of that. Grab your fabric marking pen, whatever you want to use. I personally would never use a friction pen on anything that could possibly be seen. I have a, a water pen that I like to use. Um, and then from here, you've got your own template that you can mark it. If you want to lay it down exactly where you want it to line up later on, you can kind of mark that template idea for what you want to do. So, you know, perfect placements, even if you just want to kind of mark where the tips of the Lotus are going to go or where the center is with your North, South, East, West, uh, axes coming out of it but i use my light boxes with ruler designs to give myself kind of placements too it's easier to if you have a piece here we go ooh, 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 here what if this works let's say this little guy was appliqued onto this fabric okay So if that was applique as my block and I wanted to figure out how this would look on that before actually quilting it or anything like that, turn that on, slide this under. Hopefully you guys can kind of see, but I'm lining this up and I know it's easier for me to see being right here versus on the screen. Do you see how you can use that to your advantage on different types of blocks that you have to figure out, okay, yeah, that is what I want to do. So now I can practice with preview paper, or I know exactly that this is what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to plan on doing this design every time. Easy, easy. All right, let's go back over to the table. All right, if you get... Close your eyes, we're gonna move again. Moving, moving. Somebody was loving your uh, flower block. Oh, well, Beautiful. hang in there. It'll be an English paper piecing pattern soon enough. Ooh, fun. I did wanna do a shout out um, to all of you. 
that we are going to go ahead and uh, pick a winner to win one of the um, Promise Pattern classes. So um, based on this being kind of a, a launch into this amazing Promise Pattern with all those amazing designs, we are going to go ahead and pick a winner for that. So uh, stay tuned. And, you know, I think I'm going to throw in the Lotus design um, as um, a extra giveaway item. So... Yeah, so one winner will win the Lotus with the Promise Pattern. Uh, we'll be announcing that here in the next week or so. So make sure to like, comment, and share if that's something that you'd love to win, um, along with that amazing uh, paper piecing pattern and, of course, all of the awesome designs. So um, thank you so much for showing us everything today. Was there more that you had in store for us right now? No, I mean, everything is really nice and easy, self-explanatory with every single block. There are instructions on how to achieve that design with that specific ruler. And that's just one design. That doesn't mean that's the only possible design. So by all means, have fun with it. Like, use it for free motion quilting, do whatever. And find me on Instagram. Everything on social media is Sari Diddy. Um, show me what you make, tag me. I want to see it. And you never know. I might have a giveaway myself down there. Oh, I love it. Okay. We so, could do a double giveaway. You would have to go over to Sarah Diddy on Instagram yep. and check out all of her amazingness. Sarah is, I just think one of the most beautiful, colorful designers we have so i would definitely encourage you to to take a look at that we did get word there's lots and lots of places to purchase this preview paper um so there's been posts about some of the different stores that you can find it at but i would absolutely check with some of your local quilt shops because um you know i, I do believe that it's something that's uh, definitely you know kind of popular and out there in a lot of places so very, very available. And if your local quilt shop doesn't have it, just ask them to get it in. They can get it. It's yeah. a very easy product to get a hold of. Absolutely. So again, thank you so much for sharing everything with us today. Um, you know, I think that as far as I can see, everybody is super duper excited about the opportunity to maybe win that Lotus, but also just thought that you did a, an awesome demonstration. Loved the designs that you shared. And of course, I think we've got a few people that are pretty excited about the promise pattern. It's so fun. So yeah. if, if you have not foundation paper piece before, this is the best one to get into it because so simple and laid out and there's a little tip in there for how to make it so that way it's like seamless let me show you right here literally seamless how do i switch my i forget it so you can see how my seams all hug oh yes most foundation paper piecing doesn't give you that opportunity but since this one is so straightforward with the strips lining up i gave a little tip on how to make sure you can nest them in on your pattern pieces I love it. Well, I did just want to do one quick thing. I thought I'd take everybody out to the university. This is the class that you'll get um, as a free digital download. Um, and so this is, of course, the promised pattern. It takes you through and kind of gives you some um, additional um, information about the quilt. Um, the overall promise finishes at 60 inches by 60 inches, um, but you can add more to get it longer if you'd like, right? Or bigger <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> Bonus patterns inside the pattern for how to do a cushion or a table runner, that type of thing. And then you do have um, a really cool how-to on how to do foundation paper piecing built in. So yeah. there's a little basic video that you've got that you will you can share with everyone. It looks like that's something that they could go out to right now if they want to learn more about that. Um, the Great. value of the pattern is $15. And again, when you purchase one of the rulers, it will come for free with the purchase. So okay. super excited. Thank you again for uh, coming in today and yeah, joining and sharing with everyone. Sure. All of those rulers are available on the So Steady website. So you can definitely um, you know, purchase it and then choose to pick it up from one of our resellers and I uh, get free shipping that way. So that's kind of fun. Um, and again, um, you can definitely check in some, with some of the resellers near you as well. So again, we're, we're just excited that we've got some great education coming your way. Hey, we didn't even tell them about the class that's coming up. Oh, FYI, <laughs> Quinn is going to show y'all how to do some of these actual up. We've got a two-hour virtual class coming up. 
uh, where Kate Quinn's going to go ahead and create uh, four or more of the designs um, in a two hour virtual class that's gonna be happening in September. So uh, stay tuned for more information about that, but that's gonna be coming up here in the next couple of months. Um, so now's the time to kind of get going and get excited to get some of those rulers in and then join Kate for um, that amazing class that will be on a domestic sewing machine. And she dives in and starts using these rulers that way. So excellent. Well, thanks again, Sarah. You're amazing. Have a great day, everyone. Like, comment, and share.